Hey everybody, welcome back to the Gamer Guide channel. Today we're looking at Kenshi, and specifically I'm going to be showing you how to make a high stealth character quickly uh, using blood spiders. Just waiting to load in here real quick. Um, I have myself four different um, outposts basically, uh, including the hub is one of them, which is the starting one. This is the hub here if you're trying to get your bearings. For you uh, new to this game, Kenshi, um, this is sort of what I would consider like a, well, it's definitely micromanaging somewhat different to Downs folks, uh, but it has uh, industry and building and uh, politics and fighting and all kinds of interesting stuff. Anyway, the intent of the video here is to talk about uh, getting the stealth up on one of your characters. This happens to be the one that I started with and has done the majority of all the heavy lifting and is sort of my, well not sort of, he definitely is my MVP uh, of all the characters I have and I have about what 102 of them last I checked. So that's a lot of uh, tunes with a, maybe a second uh, runner-up would be uh, Gianism since he can run 55 miles an hour and is a good re researcher but as far as the guy who goes out and gets all our AI cores blueprints, uh, scientific research books, and um, also defeated the Bugmaster solo. Uh, this is a dude, and uh, stealth definitely in this game I would say is uh, overpowered, and I feel like everybody should have one of these guys to really advance, and if you don't want to take your entire army out and do things by uh, blunt force, uh, there's also a way to be stealthy, and um, also to do some sort of fun things with um, infiltration and stuff too. When you have high stealth you can also sneak into people's buildings and, uh, and wear their outfits and stuff like that and uh, steal stuff and whatnot too if you wanted to. Uh, I use it mostly just for grabbing blueprints and plans and infiltrating into libraries to uh, just take stuff like that. Not really uh, so much into the uh, thieving aspect here in this particular playthrough. Uh, but as you can see we got a long stream of <laughs> allies here. We've built a pretty big settlement. Um, and I've picked a couple out for this episode that I wanted to go and train up and become up there with Lars as far as their stealth ability. Uh, where we're going to be going to on the map is up here uh, a little bit farther north of where the hub is. This is the hub here and this is our little base. Uh, there is a place called Rebirth which is basically like a uh, enforcement camp for these uh, Okron religion. If you're not an Okron or Okronite or whatever, you get sent there. And it's almost like a concentration camp sort of thing. Uh, but there's a back door to this lost library. And the lost library is where I uh, first discovered this little trick using uh, spiders, blood spiders more specifically, not any kind of spider. Um, and uh, being able to level up stealth very quickly. Uh, there is one other spot. If this is not close to you, if you didn't start with the uh, slave um, start or start in the standard start area or uh, you're just far far away from this and you're not gonna want to go over there to start with. Um, if you're down here in the south coast I noticed that this lost library here on the coast also has the same sort of layout. Um, it's not going to be quite as easy to train up with the blood spiders but there are actually blood spiders there even though it doesn't say that here on this uh, library layout. So these are the two guys I selected for this. They're both pretty new citizens. Uh, Pin I just got, Pin the Brewer, and Bernie's been hanging out at the Green Fort, which is kind of our agricultural fort. But I wanted to make them both uh, a little heavier in stealth, so I had more than just uh, one guy that's super high-level stealth. So we're going to go and run them through the Holy Nation. One tip I would uh, recommend is have good faction with the Holy Nation if you're going to come this way, uh, so it doesn't you know make it harder than it needs to be. Uh, you might also want to carry the Holy Flame on you. This is the book, basically, the Holy Nation seizes their Bible in case you run into something like this. Uh, I always recommend talking to them if they do track you down. A lot of times if you have the Holy Flame and you're not uh, some other race besides a humanoid, um, they'll just end up giving you a ration pack or letting you go after you show them that you have the Holy Flame. So make sure to do that. You might also want to do a little bit of lock picking prep um, because uh, they make it just a little easier at the library to unlock some of the boxes or bring some tools or a uh, hacksaw with you if you find those uh, laying around in a house or uh, can buy them at some of the bars and stuff like that uh, or some of the supply shops. Uh, yeah, bring some tools and a hacksaw and uh, some weapons too. The other thing you can do is uh, sometimes break open a door or a box, which is things we're going to need to do once we get there. So anyway, let's continue over to Blister Hill. Um, 
I'm going to actually go through the town to get there. Another way you could get there too is just go straight to Rebirth if you know where that is on the map or you have that uh, scouted out. Uh, this is kind of the harder back way. The road uh, out the back door here of Blister Hill is real windy. Up, so you're going to have to kind of micromanage your guys uh, up the little windy path. When you get up far enough, if you go like over to the left a little bit more, you actually will see Rebirth down there. That's what that is down there, um, which is kind of a holy nation concentration camp for their religion sort of thing. Uh, but we're just going to bypass that. And uh, we're going to take a little detour here off to the side at one of the exit gates. Uh, so if you are actually starting with the slave start, uh, you could do this with some of your new characters as long as you can escape out this way. So anyway, over here you'll find an ancient uh, library site with a bunch of ruined buildings and then the holy or the old ancient library down at the bottom. So you're going to go take your guys over there. Now, unfortunately, I got here at nighttime instead of at daytime, and you really need to do this at daytime. Uh, if you come here at night, uh, their blood spiders are down here, but if you even have zero stealth or one stealth and use stealth, these things won't see you at nighttime as long as it's night. Uh, at daytime, they'll see you pretty much even if you have super high stealth. So it's kind of odd. Uh, the daylight makes a big difference. So even though I don't have any stealth really trained up on this, <clears throat> and I'm not sure why that they all have uh, mild damage. Usually when you run down here, the spiders don't have damage. I do have a couple mods running, but I did this actually in vanilla before I really started modding the game. So it shouldn't make any difference. Uh, this will work either way. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and run down here. And as you see, I mean, I have zero stealth right now, but the spiders are not seeing me. If this is daytime and the little sun icon by my name was uh, lit up instead of dark, uh, this would not work and I'd be getting attacked by spiders right now. So I'm going to go ahead and go over to the Holy Library and uh, I'm going to go and, since I don't have high lockpicking, I'm just going to go and smash the door down. Um, you might still want to keep an eye out behind you to make sure the spiders are not like getting too close and creeping up on you, but I've never had them actually see me. Now it's starting to become daylight, so right about now you want to keep an eye out behind you and make sure that the spiders aren't creeping up. But in here, in the library, you can pick up some books. Um, when you open up some of the chests inside too, there's some of the ancient tombs, which are nice as a little extra bonus. All right, now that it's daytime, I'm going to switch over to uh, the other tune, and we'll come down here and actually start training now that the spiders can see us. Another thing, too, I'll mention is these skeletons uh, pretty much always will come down here, or they'll be down here already. Um, I wouldn't interfere too much with them. They have some good weapons. Uh, let the spiders just take them out, and they usually always will kill the uh, skeletons, unless there's just a whole lot of them. Uh, they have some great weapons, and uh, so when night comes again, we can go over there and loot some of their swords and stuff like that. So anyway, I started uh, training up my stealth. I had zero when I came here. I already have two just from going around the corner there. Uh, of course, they were all looking at the skeletons and attacking them, so now I should actually start getting some stealth. So I'm coming down here, uh, keeping stealth on, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on real time here too. And just walk it around, watch my uh, stealth jump up. So I'm already at five now, and we were just at zero a second ago. Six. So it moves really quickly. You're going to have to probably dedicate an in-game day to actually getting one of your avatars up to a higher level. You probably get to 70 if you use this one character. I brought two down here um, as kind of a safety measure in case one of them gets actually attacked by spiders and knocked out. The other one can come over and heal them. Uh, and like I said, I already have a character that's uh, level 100 almost um, in stealth when with the gear he's uh, 100. So he's already doing all the heavy lifting. Um, but these are just kind of backups, and I'd like to have a couple different ones so I could do uh, like costume infiltration. Here's a close look at the blood spiders, what they look like. One other interesting little comment on the blood spiders besides their horrible night vision is they have the longest in-game melee attack of any of the um, NPC characters. So unless you've gone on the Steam Market and you've got the blood spider reduced range mod, don't let them anywhere near you or uh, they will hit you when you think that they don't have the reach on you. Um, so anyway, we're going back around the corner here. You should see a uh, stealth building on pin two. So it goes pretty quickly. I'm already at six now. And uh, so just keep working at it. Uh, I'd recommend probably just concentrating on one of the characters, have the other there as a backup, like I was saying. Another method is if you've already broke the door down, you could uh, go inside of the library once it's broken down up on the ramp, and that's another way to get out of their line of sight. So blood spiders have a really terrible memory, so as soon as you're out of uh, line of sight, you're in your stealth kicks in blue, they pretty much instantly will turn back and go the other way unless they're really, really close to you. If they're really, really close to you, then they're probably going to try to get you. So don't let them get too close. If you're within that range, you're perfectly safe. You could even let them a little closer if you wanted to. But if they're right up at your heels, they're going to probably follow you inside the building, and that would be a bad thing for sure. 
So anyway, uh, nighttime is hit again here, so I'm going to go ahead and loot those skeletons we saw go down earlier, and uh, they have some really great swords, especially for beginners. That's not a good one, uh, but the other ones, uh, the ones that are green, um, they're pretty what I would consider pretty good, especially for early or mid game. Another thing you might try is uh, healing the blood spiders, taking them with you, and creating a little penned in area where you can train uh, near your base with a little uh, enclosure of blood spiders. They do die pretty easily though, so you have to be pretty quick about healing them, and you'll need some extra people to haul the blood spiders over. Well, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, one extra note I'll say is that uh, you can take any of the bounded skeletons into the Holy Nation if you're trying to improve your faction standing and turning them in and not asking for money will improve your faction standing. Unless you're allied with the Shek like I am, then you get money no matter what and you really can not improve your faction status. So it kind of depends if you're early game or if you've been playing for a while and you've already made other alliances. But uh, that's one way you can actually improve your faction by turning in uh, bounties. Anyway, that is it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please thumbs up the video if you would, and I appreciate it if you would subscribe. If you want to see more Kenshi, uh, definitely let me know, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.